What's up guys, this is the Netgear Nighthawk M7 Pro. This is a Wi-Fi hotspot that you basically get a data plan through AT&T. And it's not the same thing as like a phone. You can't take out your phone SIM card, pop it in here and use the phone's plan. You usually need to get a separate data plan. And again, a Wi-Fi hotspot. So this comes inside this box. So it just slides right out. Obviously I took it out and everything. Night Nightgear Nighthawk M7 Pro. And it basically comes with this unit and it comes with a very thick, high quality USB-A to USB-C cable. And we have the power supply, which would charge it via USB-A right here. And this cable can be used to charge this thing and also to use it in tether mode. That's why my laptop's here, so I'll demo that for you guys as well. And it is 100 to 240 volts and, and it's basically 10 watts of power. So this thing gives 10 watts of power. Okay. So let's take a closer look at this thing. It's pretty, it's very similar to the M6 Pro that I reviewed uh, in terms of size and shape. So we got a battery. Underneath this battery, there's a little SIM card right here, just like the ones that, very similar to the ones you put on the cell phones. And, uh, but again, it's on its own data plan. And then there's a whole bunch of the IMEI, all the serial numbers there. That's why I don't want to open this up. But basically this is like a flat battery. And you can run this without the battery obviously as long as it's plugged in so it has a uh it has that mode that you don't necessarily need the battery but i'm keeping the battery on um inside and then we got the button right here we'll kind of go over this menu settings real quick we got the places for the antenna it doesn't come with the antennas but i mean you don't need the antennas but i'm assuming they would help and then we have the USB-C, and then we have a up to 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and so this is our menu so again, this is the button you hit and then you basically slide right up. That gives you your Wi-Fi info. If you tap on this, you can actually scan the QR code with your phone and it'll actually connect to this, obviously, if you're here. So basically the internet section, this, this is kind of the more important section where you do cellular only or you could do Wi-Fi and cellular. And Wi-Fi and cellular basically means that if you're going, let's say if you're standing at a hotel and the hotel has Wi-Fi, what you could do is you could connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi. Obviously, if you know the hotel Wi-Fi's info with this device, it connects to the hotel's Wi-Fi. And then when you're using it, it can actually not use your AT&T data. So if you're on a limited data plan, that's something that would be an advantage. And the same is true for the Ethernet. I'll, I'll demo the I'll demo the Wi-Fi one because that's pretty easy to uh, show. And then this is the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi info. This is where you basically type in your SSID and password. And then, um, you know, you can make a separate guest Wi-Fi. You can, you know, select the bands and stuff. Now, you might be asking, okay, why aren't you on 6 gigahertz only? Why don't you test with those devices? Um, and the reason is because, I mean, I just put in the dual band mode, but 5 gigahertz can already go really, really fast. So 6 gigahertz can go faster than that. But... You would need a compatible device. My laptop is a Wi-Fi 6 device, so it doesn't support the 6 gigahertz band. Uh, I could use my uh, OnePlus 13, which does support it, and it would, you know, it can go faster. But at the same time, it would also depend on AT&T's tower speed. In some places, it's very fast. In some places, it's not as fast. Uh, but I haven't seen it go past a few hundred megabits per second. So a few hundred megabits, the 5 gigahertz band can easily do as well. Uh, devices, these are the devices that are basically connected. So my OnePlus 13 is connected to this thing right now. And then you get some options. You could do Wi-Fi range standard or long, uh, Wi-Fi standby, and then the info on home. And then Ethernet, if you want that enabled or not. Uh, network map basically tells you how you're connected. So connected via uh, my Wi-Fi, which is called Earth. And this one's Wi-Fi called it Earth M7. You get your messages. And then, then there's your settings. And aside from this, you can actually access it within an app or you can access settings through the browser interface as well. Uh, so mobile is just telling me I'm connected to AT&T. Uh, airplane mode software is just telling me which software I'm using. I could check for updates. There's no updates right now. And this is the screen. And just 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 for kicks, we'll, we'll click. As, as you guys can see, I'm up to date on the software. Uh, security, if you want to put a screen lock and stuff. And then there's the more settings and then... Device info, data usage is kind of important. Uh, so 3.9 gigs, which we set uh, a few days ago. And uh, IP pass-through and USB tethering. This is the one where I didn't click on that. Um, 
Where is it? Right here. Uh, so you could say disable the Wi-Fi of this once you're untethering or just leave it on. Uh, day format and factory reset and GPS and stuff like that. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of this thing. All right, so now because I'm on Wi-Fi and cellular, I'll do all the speed tests with this. And then, then I'll just put on cellular only just so you guys can see the differences. So there's a couple of ways of connecting this to my laptop. Number one is I could connect it via Wi-Fi, but I'll do that last because my con I turned off the Wi-Fi on my computer. So what I'll do is the first way I'll connect it is via Ethernet. Now, this laptop has an Ethernet port, but I know a lot of laptops don't, especially the smaller ones. And so that's the beauty of having... Um, that's the beauty of having USB tethering that you don't need that. You could just plug this in and there's nothing you need to install on this computer. So I'm going to do a speed test and my home internet is five gigs up and down. So my internet's very, very fast at home. Uh, obviously I'm not going to get to those speeds on this because, uh, number one is the ethernet port on this laptop is limited to gigabit speed. So no matter how fast that internet is, this can't pass gigabit on Ethernet, and that's what we're getting. We're getting that 940 number, and we should be getting right around that for the upload as well. Now, here's the cool thing about using USB tethering. So USB tethering has two big advantages over Ethernet, Num or, or three advantages, because number one is your laptop might be smaller, uh, like my MacBook doesn't have Ethernet, so I actually use a USB-C to Ethernet adapter and I get Ethernet that way. Um, but maybe your laptop doesn't have it or maybe it doesn't, it's limited. Um, so what you could do is instead of hooking it up via Ethernet, you could hook it up via the cable that it comes with to do USB tethering. So I hook this up to the USB-C and this thing usually goes off to save power. That's an option you can save. And I'm, I literally, there's nothing I need to install on this computer or anything like that. I literally connect this, um, connects right away, and I'll like close it, I'll reopen it just for kicks, I'll click go, and it should start, it should start doing its thing. Now, this is the beauty. As long as my USB port can go faster, um, I can actually get faster speeds over USB. Um, so as you guys can see, I'm getting 1.4, 1.5 basically on the download. And I don't know what I'm going to get on the upload. I'm, again, it depends on the time of day you're running this and which server you're connecting to. Uh, but obviously, I got better speeds off USB tethering. Uh, the other beauty with USB tethering is inside the app, you can actually control and say... Um, you could basically say, oh, keep this thing charged. So, so it's tether and charge. So as long as my laptop has power, this thing will have power, which is fantastic. So a lot faster speeds. So now I'm going to close this. And I'm going to click on this. I'm going to turn on Wi-Fi. I'm going to enable Wi-Fi. And then I'm going to select Earth M7, which is right here. So I'm going to click connect to that. So now I'm connected to this thing via Wi-Fi, so I'm actually going to unplug this. So there's no connection, and, and all I am is I am connected via EarthM7. Um, and then I'm going to do the same speed test on this. And Wi-Fi should be the slowest of the bunch um, in theory. And again, this is talking to my beefy router, which I'm actually running the Orbi 970 right now. And um, that one, the Wi-Fi speeds on that is very, very fast. Few moments later. Here, let me turn this off. Maybe I confused it because I turned on the Wi-Fi and connected to it. So let me turn this on. No, okay. So it's connected to Earth M7 now. Okay, there it is. Okay, so I guess don't... <laughs> connect the Wi-Fi to it when you're USB tethered to it. Uh, that confused my laptop or the neck here. Whatever it was, it got confused. Um, but obviously still getting really good speeds, um, but not as fast as if I were connected via tethering. So keep that in mind. So these are basically, this is like, this is because it's hooked up to my Wi-Fi, it's running a little bit faster. But you might ask yourself, well, like, you know, what's even the point? Like, 
So there's no point in me using this at home because my home's internet, because I have the Netgear Orbi 970, I have the faster internet, that's going to give me much faster speeds than if I'm on the hotspot. The hotspot's great if I'm going to a hotel or if I'm going somewhere, and as long as there's AT&T Tower, like I should be golden. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on internet and I'm gonna click on cellular only. So it's no longer gonna connect to my Wi-Fi it's only gonna connect to uh, the tower. And you could see that because of the speed test that I ran, all of these on the bottom should have said Frontier because uh, that's my home internet provider. Uh, so I'm gonna close this and then it's, it's taking a second because this thing is going to try and connect to, um, okay, actually no, this connected to Earth. Earth is my main network, so I don't wanna connect to that. So I wanna connect to Earth M7. Okay, so Earth M7 is connected. Now let's do a speed test on this. I gotta, I sometimes like you have to restart this thing. I feel like I'm changing too many options, but um, so you could see that it's hooked up to AT&T internet. Uh, obviously the speeds are slower because there's no more Wi-Fi, uh, but we're still getting some pretty good speeds. I mean, I'm getting 160, but this will vary drastically because I've actually been using this for a couple months now. Um, and I just wanted to play with it. I like, I would take it with me when I'd go places, I would test out the speeds. Um, I did a bunch of speed tests, uh, at a whole bunch of different places. I used it. I used it with my PlayStation portal, uh, to connect to my PS5 to play games. Um, so I used it for a number of things, um, just to get a feel for it. And I did see speeds faster than 164. I'm trying to remember, I think the fastest speed I got was like 350 to 400. I don't think I saw anything faster than that. But it's been a while. But most of the time, the speeds were anywhere from like 80 to around 200. Uh, with, with some places being like three as the speed because there was just, you know. Uh, I, w I even went to a spot, one of my friends lives in an area where it's like terrible coverage. Uh, for just about any carrier and there was no coverage there. So so I also saw that as well. Okay, so now let's do the same thing. Uh, let's turn off Wi-Fi and let's connect this via USB tether and let's see if that actually makes a difference. So I turned off Wi-Fi. 12 seconds later. All right, so I connected that. It recognizes that pretty quickly. And again, the beauty of it is there's nothing I need to install on my computer and it also keeps this thing charged. And so let's see if it actually improves the speeds. Okay, but this is a different server. But I guess it's not really improving the speeds. So this is a different server. So I wonder if I can pick the, was I on Frontier? I feel like I was on Frontier. Let's click Frontier, let's click Run. Let's see how this one does. Okay, so it's not, it's, you know, it's within the realm. It's, it's even doing slower than the other one. Uh, but it's kind of within the realm where regardless if I'm on Wi-Fi or I'm on Tether, it's getting roughly the same speeds. I mean, it, in fact, on Wi-Fi, I was getting a little bit faster. Uh, but with the other server, it actually got faster. Uh, and, that, and on the side note, this is why I like to use local speed test when I use, when I test my routers, just because... Um, the internet speed test can really vary at times. So there are two other ways of accessing the settings on this thing other than on itself. One is through the browser interface where you go to 192.168.1.1. It will ask for your admin password, which is something you set when you were setting this thing up. And obviously the computer needs to be connected to this thing, or you can actually use it through the Netgear mobile app, which is the same thing. Basically hooked it up via Wi-Fi, and then it'll ask you to log in with admin uh, name and password that you already set up on this thing. And then you get a very similar menu set up to this thing. So Wi-Fi, you could control that. You could go, go to global Wi-Fi settings, control some of this stuff right here. Uh, guest Wi-Fi, disabled for now. Devices shows you just the iPhones connected to it. Messages, there's nothing here for me. Power is for rebooting and powering off. And then security, if you want to do parental controls or SIM security, you get those options. Network map, 
This is one where it shows you, because I'm connected to the tower, it shows me AT&T, but if I was connected to Wi-Fi, like the Wi-Fi and cellular mode, and this was actually hooked up, it would actually show like a different arrow with the Wi-Fi here and showing me I'm actually connected to that, so I'm no longer using the AT&T data. So kind of useful for that. Uh, settings, basically just things you want to play with. Screen, if you want to change your admin password, this is the password that you use to log into this app. And then this is what I was talking about, the charge and tether. So when you hook it up via USB, you can actually set it to charge and tether. So you just need to keep your laptop charged or whatever you're connected to charged. And you should be golden. And then, you know, network, some AT&T stuff, something. I didn't actually touch anything here. It was just all on auto. And basically notifications, just everything's kind of on for this. Wi-Fi, which is the global Wi-Fi settings. And then basically I could do a factory reset and there's a few other things. So is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, if you need Wi-Fi on the go and where you're going, there's AT&T towers. This is a really good choice because there's this is super, super, super portable. It charges via USB-C, which is fantastic. There's no special things I need to install on my computer to use it. I could connect to it via Wi-Fi, via Ethernet, via um, USB tether, basically. So... No, again, nothing I need to install on this. Very easy to use. It's basically a portable router with a data subscription that you would pay through AT&T. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.